Hello, my name is Caleb. I'm with CK Studios. We were invited by Knights at the Gaming Table to participate in their upcoming video series. To help promote this, we shot this quick video on how to base coat a Plague Marine. Hopefully you will like this video and you will join us over at Knights at the Gaming Table to see our complete video. We will paint a Plague Burst Crawler from start to finish. We will base coat, paint metals using inks, weathering, and other unique techniques that we have from CK Studios. So please join us over at Knights of the Gaming Table. Until then, enjoy this video. So here's the model that we're going to be uh, painting today. Um, this is going to be the tutorial on base coating a, a Plague Space Marine. Uh, this is a Plague Marine from this from the GW line, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to use our airbrush to do a quick base coating for this for this model, or actually just a, a, a quick armor coating. And um, we're going to go through the steps of using our airbrush with that. To do this model, what we're going to paint with is we're using our Harder and Steambeck Evolution. This is the AL Plus. This is the aluminum edition. Um, this is my personal home brush, uh, one of my favorite brushes. But this has the .4 nozzle in it. Um, this is going to allow us to, to spray airbrush ready paints pretty much straight from the pot. Uh, I'm going to be using GW products today along with uh, um, uh, Dollar and Roni inks. So um, my initial colors are going to be um, from Citadel Air, Elijah Green. This will be my base coat color. My highlight color is going to be Ogren Camo. And then my shadow is going to be Dollar Roni burnt umber. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to start off with our base coat color. I'm going to go ahead and load this into the brush. Just a couple drops makes this nice and quick. So this model is not going to take a lot of paint. Um, we do teach in our classes a lot about airbrush hygiene and part of that is make sure that we're not filling our cup all the way up with paint. We want to avoid that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to load my paint into the brush. And then what I'm going to do is called a directional base coat. So instead of taking like what we commonly do is we take the entire model and we would just spray over the whole thing, um, spraying it green until every little nook and cranny. Well, what's happening now is that we've already have our shadows established for the model. Uh, so let's just exaggerate those out. When we're airbrushing um, at CK Studios, we like to talk about when we're painting with the airbrush, we're not painting with colors, we're actually painting with light. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just place the light onto the model. We're gonna do that with the base coat. So we're gonna do what we call the directional base coating. It's a term that we've, uh, a, a phrase that we've coin, coined with CK Studios. Um, we're gonna start with pretty much a zenithal coat. I'm just gonna spray a light coat over the top. You'll notice you can hear a lot of air, very little paint. I'm spraying about, I'm spraying 100% air and maybe about 10% trigger. I'm gonna pull back about maybe that far with the trigger, not much. And I'm gonna slowly build my paint. I wanna make sure I'm spraying over a black prime model, not a white prime model for this to work. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna gently walk around the model, spraying from an upward direction on it and just put an initial coat. So now if you look straight down the model, you can see he's kind of pretty much green. If we were to flip him upside down and look at him from below, he's all black. Uh, we start to see the shape. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with the airbrush now at about a 45 degree angle to the model. And I'm just gonna start picking up a little more areas that I wanna put more light. You see I'm gonna go around the head, go on the shoulder, around the stomach, down onto the feet a little bit. What I want to avoid doing is spraying from below up into the model. It will flush out all those shadows. So I wanna stay with kind of an upward direction, spraying down onto the model. And then I'm just gonna slowly build to opacity. The more paint I apply, the brighter it's gonna get until I finally reach that Ogren camo color with the airbrush. So you can see right here, I've got some nice shape going to him. He's pretty bright, he's got some good shape. See his little belly and stuff like that. You see all the shadows are still maintained. Um, highlights starting to develop. So now that I've got this initial coat done, I'm gonna go ahead and clear my brush real quick. And now I'm gonna come in with my highlight color. Um, so to do this, I'm gonna use Ogre and Camo. A little bit brighter, a little bit more of a yellow look to it. Now this time, instead of spraying like kind of an all over zenithal like we did before, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I'm actually gonna start to pick out shapes. I'm gonna pick out the shoulder pad, the head, the face, etc., and just start to put highlights on those. So again, a lot of air, very little paint. And I'm just 
going to slowly build up the light on the model. A little bit on these back legs. Just to make that a little brighter, a little bit about across the back of the backpack. Now you'll notice I'm coming back in and I'm spraying the areas that I had already sprayed before. What happens is the airbrush is inherently transparent. So it's got a little bit of transparency to it. So the more I come back, as it dries, it'll, it'll get a little darker because it's under a black base coat. So as I come back and apply more, it'll get a little brighter and a little brighter as it dries. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lighten those areas up. And that looks pretty good right there for me. So he's got some nice highlights going. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clear my brush again. And I'm going to take my shadow. Uh, to create my shadow, I'm going to use the Dalleroni Burnt Umber Ink. It's going to load a little bit in my brush. It doesn't take much. As you can see, here's the color that I'm using, Dalleroni Burnt Umber. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and approach from below the model and spray upwards. But I'm not going to spray the entire model. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just start working on each section. I'm going to hit the underside of the leg plate here, the underside of the knee. I'm going to pick out a little bit under the belly, a little bit under the plate. I'm going to do the bottoms of those shoulder pads. Now here, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to change my angle a little bit. And I'm going to pick out just a little more of the shape of that chest plate by letting some of that brown go up the side of the chest plate a little bit. It's going to create a little more shape right there. The underside of this knee pad, the underside of this leg plate. Kind of working around the model. I'm going to spray a little bit of shadow to each side of the head. Whoop. Let that puddle a little bit. Let's wipe that down. The inks are nice because the more you apply, the darker it's going to get. So I'm just slowly kind of just working the shadow around the model. We don't want to be too ham-fisted and put a lot of shadow or our model will become very, very dark and we won't be able to see a lot. So try to preserve as much shadow, I mean as much highlight as you can, but make sure you're spraying in an upward direction. You notice I'm spraying from below up onto the model. And now what we get is a nice shape. So once we're kind of happy with that, and I'll probably go around and work just a little more. I'm putting a little bit of shadow at the top of those little leg plate things. We'll help draw those out a little bit on the inside of the knee here. Just kind of work around the model until you're happy with those shades, with those shadows. Once we finish that, now we're ready to just go in. We could do our pin washing and do our edge highlighting. And that's pretty much the base coat for a Plague Marine. If we can go in and start to do the detail work, you'll see how they, it ties in and we can, we can create a model that looks nice and vibrant, something like this. Uh, but this is the basis here. We're showing you this now to invite you guys to join us over at nights at the game table for their new video series. And here's the model that we, we painted for the video series. You can join us here. We're using that same basic base coating technique that we used with the Plague Marine. We put it on a grander scale with the Plague Burst Crawler. We're also going to teach things like weathering, metallics, um, creating volume and shape, vibrancy with light. Using these same techniques that we use in the video, you can also complete your Marine up to this standard here. So please, we invite you guys to join us over at Knights of the Game Table for their new video series.